Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of PodCap. Today, I sit down with Tadasuke and Layson and talk about the various tournaments that are going on in the Cap metagame. This includes Playtest and the early parts of Snake Draft. In this episode, we also learn why Layson was denied a badge. It's pretty interesting stuff. But before we can talk about that, PodCap is brought to you by Smogon.com. Since without it, the competitive Pokemon community would just be VGC singles. That exists, right? I think so. Ah, whatever. And the Create a Pokemon Discord, now with a new and improved voice chat. Thanks, Kwani. And by listeners like you. Thank you. And now, our feature presentation. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another exciting episode of PodCap, the only podcast in the competitive Pokemon scene that suggests you use Scarf Miasma to check Commodore. I'm your host, Voltage, and today I'm joined by two very, very cool people. One is the current tournament director for Cap, and the other is a very popular and prominent player in the tournament scene. Uh, please welcome Tadasuke and Layson. Uh, hello. Hello there. Feel free to uh, introduce yourselves as you feel necessary as well. Okay, uh, I'll go first really quick. Uh, I'm Tadasuke. I've been uh, active in the cap room for uh, intermittent periods of time since 2013. Been a mod on and off. I wouldn't really say that I'm the tour director. I just host a lot of tournaments. But yeah, sure. that's that's just about it for me. Absolutely. So tour director. Okay. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> yeah, no, the official tour director, yeah. The cap tour director. <laughs> <laughs> the only person that actually hosts tours besides MX. Anyhow, yeah. I'm Layson. Um, I'm, uh, I'm more prominently like a player uh, known as the one Uber's guy that got bought like two cup team tournaments ago, did okay, then was hyped up as a really good player for this year's uh, cap PL. They're absolutely awful in it. Uh, I usually play the role of builder in whatever team I am on, and uh, I'm currently uh, going through the tournaments that Cap actually is running at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So today's episode, we're going to talk a lot about tournaments in general, including uh, some upcoming ones, including Snake Draft. Uh, but what before we go into those, let's talk about some of the previous tournaments that have happened in the Cap community since, you know... Maybe uh, this past summer, summer 2020, uh, including, you know, the budget tour, Cap UU tournament, the playtest tournament. Um, and we're going to talk just a little bit about those before we go into Snake Draft. Um, so, Tadasuke, in particular, you've organized some of these tournaments. Can you sort of speak about those and the process of organizing these rather niche tournaments, for lack of a better way of putting it? Yeah, no, niche definitely fits the uh, description for that. Um well, I don't know. I feel like it's not that difficult to host a tournament on the forums so long as you have people that are willing to play, which you might not always have. But with something like the budget tour, that was kind of a spin-off of something that I did in 2014 or so, which was the Dark Horse tournament or competition. And essentially mm -hmm. the point of that is to get people to try to use uh, lower tiered Pokemon and see if any of them are any good. Usually they aren't. And pretty much what that tour kind of evolved into is like, okay, bring hyper offense or sun. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it was fun to not have Equilibra, Tomahawk, and uh, Toxapex on every single team. Maybe the players enjoyed it. I don't know. Wholeheartedly. I, I know uh, I built a team for that, and I believe I'm going to open up my builder just to be sure about it. But it used, like, you know... Uh, Mandibuzz and like Scissor and like yeah. Tomahawk Equilibra, but then it also had Stunfisk as my rocker because Stunfisk was like a pain in the ass for a couple of those high tier threats. And so I was like, huh, this, this works decently well. And it was kind of obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah, the. Oh, go for sorry, it. Sorry. Uh, Rillaboom and Lucha, that pair was actually really popular in that tour because it cost like 22 out of 50 points. And you could just slap that yeah. on like most teams. Yeah, absolutely. No, I had I built one team for it, which eh, it did okay, but it was uh, Rilla, Lucha, Toxtricity, Argonaut, Libra, and Darmanitan, <laughs> which 
Yeah, it, it did okay, but... Yeah. And I found the team. It was Gengar, Weavile, Blissey, Mandibuzz, Scissor, and Stunfist. Jesus. Yeah, so that was a fun one. Uh, what were the other tours that you asked about? There was yeah, the yeah, Cap the UU. Cap UU tournament, mm -hmm. and then also, I guess you're not in charge of playtest, but we can also talk about that. Uh, so Cap UU in particular. Um, so I actually wasn't the one that directed that. That was all G Luke. Um, oh, that was G Luke. That yeah. No, no, no worries. But it, it, the gist for that was that Cap UU is standard UU plus I think any cap that is B rank or lowered. Mm -hmm. So. It was trying to revive a bit of Cap UU, which I think has occurred in previous generations, but it, it was a small enough tour, but it, it still had a few people signing up for it. I think it actually yeah. finished up recently. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it just wrapped up. It mm -hmm. was, uh, let me see who it was won by really quickly here. Shunosaurus um, Lee? Sh yeah, Shunosaurus, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Max, Max Wheel won the... Uh, budget tour so yeah however you pronounce that yeah yeah and then you also hosted the cap regular tournament as well which was you know just a basic little stand standard tournament basically yeah it's, it's a regular tournament uh that was <laughs> just because um i'm probably gonna butcher his name but quiziel qziel um yeah. had literally just i think it's a ladder yeah qziel had posted in the cap discord something like hey can somebody just host a regular tournament so <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah sure yeah. i can do that the regular tournament there you go and i think that was won by reach zero i think yes reach won that one yeah gotta have respect for reach with the ways he can uh make life work so yeah, he's the <laughs> pastor kind of, of disaster so you gotta watch out yeah, for him true. he's got two kids now isn't that crazy that's two more than me i think <laughs> Same here, and hopefully think? for a little while. I'm pretty sure, yeah. As a small, uh, as a small anecdotal story about Reach, yeah. uh, because I'm um, primarily uh, an Uber's player, uh, I was uh, helping some of the staff, and we were cleaning up some of the old gen stuff. And one of the teams in DPP that is still being used, that was created when DPP was current gen, I think it was made right around when Platinum came out, so like 2009-ish, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, is a Reach Zero sample. So this guy has been around <laughs> for like 11 years on Smog Gun, just battling it oh, out. Yeah. So respect to him for that. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, let's so, so, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go for it. Go for it. Uh, I was going to say that the uh, the other tour that is live right now is the Cyclone Cup, which uh, actually just had a pretty big upset because our our, our friend Layson here uh, got got by a rain team, Ooh. and so now yeah now it's one to one with uh, his team against I think Pepsi's team. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, have anything just... to go into about that one? So are you asking me? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I just finished this game just one hour ago, I want to say, something like that. And I was banking on uh, living a hit with Alola Ninetales, which, again, it's the Shockwave Hermosa team. Yeah. <laughs> so that because I managed to uh, pretty much just take down, Pe take down Pelipper on like turn eight. Pepsi, just kind of throwing it out i didn't quite get why he did that because i could just you know play it safe and get a hail back up mm -hmm. at any given point uh but yeah um i didn't call i could have killed the um rushifu with an ice beam and one off of that uh it, w it was a bit unfortunate because i did end up missing a focus blast with mm -hmm. my feromosa on it but uh it, the onus is on me because you know, I'm amazed I, you stayed in with with Alola and Nine Tails and the Barrasquita. Yo, you saw the cock. It was a twelve percent chance to kill. I and I'm know, like, but still, I would want. I'm like, you know what? Risk rain. it. Risk it for the biscuit. There's yeah, no exactly. way. If I'm max HP, I never die there. And, and I was sitting there thinking, he must have called this. There's no way. Like, alas, I did not. Oof. I did not manage to, to uh, pull it through. No, it's it's fine. The matchup that's left right now is 
Chess versus uh, Lucario. Chess versus, uh, yeah, Lucario yeah. Legend. Yeah. Mm. Your team, your badge to ICVB team is, like, fucking stacked, too. Just because, like, yeah. you, Shispy, and Jordy all are, like, very solid builders and players. So I was like, well, if I have to face off against a team, I hope it's not that. And my, my team, for what it's worth, we were all like, we didn't give a shit about this one. <laughs> this, uh... Oops, we got 3 0 <laughs> This uh, this tournament has been going. <clears throat> the the building process has been amazing because we just check what is new in the meta game as far as you know Galar DLC two or whatever mm -hmm. is out, uh, and we just, we just build around some mods that th should not work like in any way, shape, or form. Like we just add Galar Moltres to teams where it doesn't even fit in yeah. the excuses. Oh, it can take one Shadow Ball. Can it take two? No. No. But it can I take saw one. I team that had that, and I was like, whoa, Galarian Moltres, what the hell, dude? Yeah, things like that, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, been, it's been really fun because uh, we actually do end up playtesting a little bit, and it's useful to uh, test out things that we wouldn't want to test out in, in more serious quote-unquote tournaments because... Yeah. For example, if uh, one of us ends up losing, uh, we can rely on one another to, you know, say that we're either going to outplay with, like, a mediocre team. Right. D no offense to, like, any of our potential opponents, but... No, this uh, or is a we fun, can just it's a fun, low-stakes tournament. Yeah. yeah, or we can just say, you know, oh, um, I kind of want to win this week. Uh, uh, Jordi, can you bring, like, full stuff? <laughs> from oh, OU fuck. and see how that works <laughs> out. Can you bring and Moltres stall, please? Yeah. Moltres stall is actually good. Yo, Joy, I did know. you bring I uh, got fucking rocked by Sun Miser because I didn't build for Moltres yesterday. The only yeah, I saw I, that. Like, I, I, the team I won with had two bulky water types on it, and the team that I, teams I lost with didn't have any bulky waters on it, so I guess I look like the fool now. Yeah. You also got burned by Moltres on the Galarian Zapdos, like, turn one. I I know, and that was fucking stupid. Yeah. I am going to say... But you know what? I guess I invited it because I did click U-turn, but still. It, it is what it is, and, like, I I will be completely real in that my building the past weeks and a half has not been good. Uh, hmm. And I will be the first to admit that it's uh, something I'll be definitely improving upon for Snake Draft coming up here down the line. And I think that's a really good segue to sort of go into talking about Snake Draft, actually, just because um, this is coming up here and signups for players opened up today, like at midnight yeah. earlier today. Mm -hmm. And we have our six teams. We have G Luke's Malicious Miasmas. We've got Shispy's Eternal Equilibrias. Eternal Equilibrias. We've got My Snake Bradlers, Jordy's mm -hmm. Sizzling Smokemotos. Erwin's got the Astrolado Estrellados. And then we have Lucario of Legends Red Hot Pyrokes. Um, so, Tadasuke, can you go a little bit in depth for those who might not know how Snake Draft works and sort of talk about uh, the process, whether it's the drafting process, the playing process, um, something along those lines? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, for people that were actually around for Cat PL, um, it's essentially the same thing as that once the tournament actually starts, but the process of drafting is a bit different. Um, in CAPL, you had a, a draft order similar as what we have now, but any of the picks were done by submitting a person to be bid on. Whereas in Snake Draft, they're just you pick somebody and then it goes on to the next person. So it's yeah. a lot more high stakes at the beginning of the draft, where I think a lot of uh, players that have shown themselves to be good are going to be picked up almost immediately. Already with the signups, we have about 12 or 15 or so, if I can count. And you've got, you know, players. You know, you've got QZL who's up there, Atha, Reach are all up there, uh, Layson's in there right now since he's there. And then you got the big man, Ron5, in there as well. <laughs> uh, but you've got Ravia, Derek, uh, Sunmiser, is he there even a little bit, who's been, like, up on the rise lately, it feels like. Um, but there's so many cool players that, like, I'm really interested in seeing who I might be able to draft just for the sake of, like, who I want initially and then who, like, in later rounds might want to pick up. Because depending on how many players we get, we might be able to get some pretty deep teams again. I hope so, yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure if this is going to have the same draw as CatPL just because, I mean, first of all, people are going to be busy around the holidays. And second of all, I think mm-hmm. CatPL is more well-established and advertised. But yeah. I don't know. It's something I'm interested to see is whether or not each manager is going to choose to draft themselves in the beginning. Um, yeah. Because that's that does essentially forego the first round, but somebody could get two picks in if they really wanted to. Yeah. yeah. And the rule is here is like if a manager wants to play on their team, you have to draft yourself first, no excuse or no exceptions, basically. So Mm -hmm. like, as you said, if I didn't want to play on my team, but I wanted to manage, I could grab someone like, you know, QZL as my first pick and then say, okay, I'm not going to play at all, but Mm -hmm. I can build and everything. So that's definitely something to think about, especially with the order of uh, who's getting what. So yeah, that was the start drafting my... I'm going to start drafting my draft plan. Yeah, exactly. No, that was the case with uh, this past CatPL. I was on C. Brevin's team, and I don't think he played a single game. But, I mean, he did right. have some good people on the team as well. Yeah, the choice band, Revenox. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, there's a lot about CatPL's end, ending like week where we, like the playoff format didn't get decided until the end, which I was not super thrilled about, but... That was then, and this is now, and we go forward with that. I don't know, man. You just, TDing can be difficult at some points, or, or not. It's just yeah, depends on the situation. Absolutely. Since we're on the topic of uh, Snake, uh, I wanted to bring up that the order is that... How many teams are there again? I already there forgot. There are six. six, yeah. Okay, so there's six teams, so you start from the first manager, and it goes all the way to the sixth. And then the order is reversed, so the sixth manager gets to draft again. So what actually ends up happening is that the people that are in the middle, like spots three and four, actually end up being hurt more so than some others because I feel like you're just smack middle of the whole thing. So you're not exactly getting your first picks every single time. Nor are you be yeah. nor are you able to, you know, like wait it out and get some underrated picks because your underrated picks might just leave like you, you might not mm. get them because of it yeah so other um, people might see that your underrated picks are their underrated picks yeah exactly so uh tada could you uh do the honors of telling the people what the draft order is at the moment like the oh yeah order. so the draft order is g luke shisp voltage jordy airwind and luke and I think that because of the of the format of this, uh, Luke and G. Luke, the two Lukes, are both at a distinct advantage because both of them are going to be getting two successive picks in a row. Yeah. Um, whereas somebody like Jordy or Voltage uh, kind of gets screwed by the order because you kind of have to wait for everyone else to pick, then you get one, and then repeat. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, It'll it... Just- it's all It'll randomized. Force me to so. make a really intelligent draft plan, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and you can't spend like 41k on Stresh or anything. Right. <laughs> Honestly, I would not be surprised if Shisby takes G- uh, if Stresh is not taken by G Luke in the first one. Shisby will absolutely take Stresh to prevent Jordy from getting him. Mm-hmm. Assuming Stresh shines up, but I would assume that Stresh is going to do so. Oh, he most likely will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not to give away, like, my draft plan or anything, but there are some players who have already signed up that I I would love to grab round one. And I mm. think I'm going to have to make... At least the way I'm thinking about this, when I signed up, I had to start thinking about how I wanted to do this draft process just because it's my first snake draft and yeah. um, it's, it's different. Um, but the way I see going into this draft, now that I know that I'm picking third, uh, which is never the fun place to be, as Lason explained... Um, a lot of my drafting plans are going to be making like a top, like top four and then top five for each round of picks. So like, you know, it's like, okay, round one, I have to pick my top three. And then if they're still there, great. And then I sort of go into my second pick and I make like top nine based on those. Right. So it's like a flow chart in a way. So like if these players are still in, then I just go with the one that I want the most next and sort of go down the line and spreadsheet all that. So I've been slowly but surely developing my draft plan as needed here but i guarantee there's probably better ways to do it <laughs> i think heaven jay just signed up as well so there's yep. another person to look out for yeah 
there's a lot of really, really interesting players I would be happy to have on my team. So, mm -hmm. anyway. But yeah, so, so Walt, I wanted to ask you while we're on yes. the topic. You have uh, been a manager for both Snake and Capiel now. And uh, I know that Snake technically hasn't started yet. And I, I'm not quite sure if you have any other experience with the Snake format as far as you being the one to draft is. But uh, how would you rank the two? Like as somebody that needs to draft like difficulty wise, like which one is easier to draft a plan for and uh, all sure. of that? Yeah, um, so I haven't had experience doing too many other draft leagues, so to speak, but I have been going through, uh, you know, like the Snake Draft and OU or like the main metagames and whatnot, uh, just trying to get a better sense of, you know, how the drafting order process takes precedent and how it really impacts the composition of certain teams. Hmm. And, and now that I know that I'm third pick in particular, I'm going to have to sort of look at how the third pick teams and the middle picking teams really had to adapt with their teams and see like statistically where they've ended up in the past. Um, but I would say before having to draft for snake so far, I really like the bidding process for capital because it's really fun. Also I'm saying cap, yeah. not cap PL. Um, <laughs> I, when snake and I, we were developing our draft plan uh, since we were allowed to have assistant managers uh, snake and I spent a while just sort of, figuring out how we wanted to do it. And our main goal, we had like five or 10 people that we were like, yes, if we can grab this person, let's grab them. And the other mindset was like, if we can upbid people as much as possible, let's do that. And then there were, so like for Stresh, for example, when we nominated Stresh like round one or round two, I was going to like see how far Offler wanted to go with that. But I was like, after 20,000 or so, I was like, no, I don't want to go that far. But clearly I should have because Snails did really well. Um, yeah, that team was fucked up. That's <laughs> There are a lot of good players on that team. Yeah. But like Snake and I, we were, we were really about the um, process of trying to make sure that we were making people upbid as much as we want. So that that way mm -hmm. we could guarantee yeah. people we wanted. Like Atho was one of the players that we wanted. Or like, you know, some other players that were out there that were going on. We wanted to grab those. Um, obviously things we, our team, when we had it all squared away, I'm very proud of my Astros team. Some people mm, thought that we were going to be very low placing just based on some of the picks we grabbed, but I think mm -hmm. some players definitely showed themselves like Spoo, too spoopy for you. I was really happy with that grab in particular, just because not many people knew how active and like as good of a teammate Spoo could be. Yeah. So I would say like the entire team, we had a really good culture and like, Everyone was sort of there and like actively participating in building or like testing. So I'm happy about that at least. Um, I do think, you know, it was a good team, but I wish we had done a little bit better, especially in the last week, because we were still technically playoff contenders based on that. And then yeah. we just dropped the ball. So um, I'm looking, at least in that draft, I was looking in particular for players who would be able to fill roles, but also help build teams. Um, and like be general teammates and not just like, hey, give me a team and that's it, right? Um, with this draft in particular, since there's not as much focus on, like there's no focus on bidding, my main mindset going into this draft is figuring out, okay, I need a backbone of like two or three really good players that I would be happy to have on this team. Um, and then from there, I'm developing the remaining picks based on like who's been solid in room tours, who's had an active presence and shown that they're competent and capable when it comes to building, battling and like helping other people test. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's just my mindset as a captain, I'm maybe more inclined to pick people who are maybe not as strong of battlers, but they're good team presences. And I'm, and going forward, that might change a little bit just in case, like I actually do, I do want to win tournaments, obviously, but yeah, I think it's yeah. important to emphasize that a strong team can help win. Because again, like, as you've said, Lazen, you, Shispy and Jordy, when you three have that synergy to build and test and just goof around with the Cyclone Tour, you guys are all really solid team as a whole. So it's a matter of making sure that you have strong players, but the team is also strong. Uh, something I wanted to bring up, the difference, the very big difference, I feel, 
between uh, cap snake and other snakes is that in other snakes, whether it's the UU snake that is, uh, I think signups are still going on, they're going to close soon, or, mm. or the draft is soon, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and, you know, the big smog and snake, the one that awards a trophy, is that the cap snake only has basically two tiers, and that's sword and shield cap and SM cap. Right. So something that you can do in uh what's it called in, in actual snake is you can put your resources into drafting for a specific tier especially if the pool for that tier is very small so you can right. take advantage of your position to hit for example the ru pool if you think that a specific ru player is just head and shoulders above the rest of the crowd whereas here in cap i feel like there's a, a big overlap between SS and SM as far as playing and building skills go. Yeah. So it's not quite the same. So I think the position matters even more so than in uh, regular Snake or X tier Snake. Yeah. 100%. I don't know. I think having or being able to draft some solid SM players is going to make a huge difference because I'm not sure every team is going to prioritize that. Mm -hmm. And like if you take a look at like Jordy's performance in the past cap PL, um, I don't he think he'd have he, to draft for SM. Yeah, exactly. He is one of his own slots, and that's it's going to be very difficult to beat him. Right. But how other teams prioritize their drafting around that it could be important. Yeah, and I think not to give away too much of my draft plans, but like I think if I were to pick, my first pick is probably going to be an SM slot, just because of the fact that SM is one of those positions that you are going to have to actively draft for because like most players in the cap community right now are ss players that's yeah. there's no question about that the real question is who is able to dive back into z moves megas and like power creep the meta um with sm in comparison and you know when i was drafting for capital i i had like my mindset was we're going to draft like three or four competent sm players who can, like, you know, hold their own. And for the most part, we had that, but I think this one, it's going to be more imperative that you actively have at least one, if not two, very, very, very consistent SM players. So um, that's that's sort of my thoughts about SM as being part of the uh, tournament this time, this time around. You know, the managers being able to self-buy might actually end up with a huge curveball because for yeah. example imagine if Jordy decides you know what i'm not going to draft myself i'm going to draft stretch and i don't get to play but now i'm not only uh denying somebody stretch i also have a player that i can flex into whatever slot i want right and i am certain that my builds are going to be used to their maximum potential absolutely so, but at the same time if you don't get stretch or if you put stretch in a different position and you end up drafting uh, let's say that the sm pool is super weak and you end up not getting the sm players you want um are you certain that uh, the sm player that you're going to draft or even the ss player if you didn't end up buying yourself is he going to be able to use the teams that you give him as well as you would so it's it's kind of a exactly. double-edged sword you're taking kind of a you know kind of a risk but uh I don't know. I feel like the player base has definitely become much more. St <clears throat> yeah, the cap mains definitely have become stronger than they were in cap PL. I would and, wholeheartedly uh, agree with that. Yeah, and I hope that we will get to see some uh, outsiders as well, like we did in cap PL with um, the likes of the entire OMPL winning team that got yeah. to uh, show <laughs> up again, player <laughs> for player. Yeah, <laughs> that was I, fun. Uh, I might what I might do since I'm in the social media um, Discord server for Smogon, uh, I might make a they have they literally have a channel for Cap, so I might say like, hey, <laughs> we are going to be doing uh, the uh, la, la, the uh, uh, snake draft. snake draft and see something like that, or like even just promote your stuff in like the Smogon uh, one that's where all the badged players can post. Oh, wait, you two don't have badges. Oops. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I actually, I actually just got denied a badge two days ago because Ooh. one of my, I, I wasn't eligible to vote, so I couldn't get Tyrion Contributor for one game. I was one game away from getting Tyrion Contributor. Oh. So that hurt a lot. That's rough. Oh, that's, that's brutal. Uh, no, but um, I can definitely post, I think I'm, I'll talk to maybe, and maybe Tadasuke, this should be something too, you might ask for like uh, at Burkle or something, but I think it would be really good to put that in like the, uh, the uh, uh, promote your shit, whatever the, uh, the thread is or whatever, because I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, How is that anyway. A, I thought you were going to say, hey, Burkle, can I have pre-con? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Burkle, can you give Tadasuke a ladybug for me, please? <laughs> yeah, can you give me forum mod? I wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah that too yeah listen i just want to give people the icbb title that's all <laughs> <laughs> no i just want to give it to myself <laughs> uh, now i'm badged to icbb <laughs> yeah exactly just take the it's the self-inflicted journey yeah one of the other things about um the drafting process compared to uh capital with snake is that you can't like fake people out with your bids mm that was uh i will be the first to admit that i had maybe a little to forget who it was but that was also one of my favorite things about the uh drafting process there uh let me see where i can find it because i definitely took a screenshot mm. of it at one that point was... um yeah i got jordy to upbid himself from 13 to 14 on on someone just because i put like 0.135 as opposed to 13.5 so that was really oh <laughs> Shout out to a guy now yeah. who outplayed himself by tra by drafting Snore. <laughs> <laughs> fun teammate. Yeah, just teammate. just outplay your entire team into the ground. Mm, that's all I'm going to say, just fun teammate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say what you want about Snore, but he's uh, certainly passionate about his team. Let's put it that way. Oh, anyway, hell yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm excited especially for the... Uh, player base and given that there's you know two weeks to sign up for snake draft and get everything going i'm really excited because i feel team tournaments like this bring out really the best in players uh both building battling and just like general community building i think is, they're one of the best ways to really develop a community of people and yeah and exactly to, to get people building better to be honest yeah no i think that Pretty much, I was uninvolved in CAP for a long time until the most recent CAP PL, and that kind of got me more involved with the community again, because I'd been away for, I think, like two or three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and the best part about team tournaments as a whole is, again, you get to learn about new players and their ability to really show what they're capable of, right? Because you've got to fill six slots, and I guarantee... Some slots are going to be filled by people who are hungry to prove themselves. And, yeah. and, you know, they might make some really cool, cool sets that, you know, you have. And then sometimes you got to say, no, don't don't bring this. Don't bring this to a tour match, please, <laughs> for the love of God, don't do that. Just don't bring a Bulu plus Serp. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... one of the things that I have to tell myself not to bring every week is screens Astro, Astro with safeguard. <laughs> so that you can set up the screens and then also s safeguards so that you can switch into scalds without fearing burns. It's like yeah, it's like it's a fun tech, but it it, it it's not good. <laughs> oh, I wish the old Smokomoto server still existed. I think I brought it up uh, at at the, at the different point as well. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, I was on the Smokomotos for a Cap TT. What was it? Four? Five. Five, five yeah. Five. 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 Yeah. yeah. And one of my teammates was uh, Terracotta, oh, who, yes. uh, who was uh, the co-creator of the infamous Smoko Zone, a.k.a. Air Balloon Sub Magnetrize Magnezone, which was at the time the only thing that could beat Equilibra when it had all those broken moves, such as Dragon Tail and Protect and uh, all the other fun stuff and access, of course, to uh, Bulletproof. But I digress. So um, if, if we brought what we brought, such as Trick Room Rain and Smoko Zone, you could, <sighs> the denied ideas were, holy crap. 
<laughs> the things that he was didn't not somebody allowed bring to bring haunter Sorry, didn't somebody bring a Haunter to a, a yeah, Camp PL yeah, game or a Camp yeah, TT yeah, game? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he won with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Layson, you talk about Trick Room Rain. Uh, you beat me with that yes, uh, the last that. week of Cap Team Tournament 5. Uh, but at that point, the revs were already out of contention, so it was like, okay, I guess I'm getting 5 0'd by Trick Room Rain, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but. I'm I'm really excited to see what crazy ideas get thrown into Builder, especially with um, team tournaments like these, because they're always it's always so much fun to just like throw ideas at the wall and see what sticks, especially in team tournament stuff. And I know again, Layson, you get you and your teams have always had that. Whether it's the pine or no, you were on the private hikes, right? Uh no, I was on the uh, pine coast. You were on the pine coast. That's right. Yes. And Tadaske, even in like the Seabrevs revs team there's always bound to be like interesting things being built oh i was not innovating whatsoever um but i did see i think my favorite set out of that was a level 99 slow king just for the the real slow teleport i hate that so much <laughs> i think on the pine coast at some point we're trying to make uh nocturna screens work and yeah I think I, I brought it versus Pip in a I test in a game. That, didn't they? No, no, no. I mean in a test game. I brought it oh, versus okay. Pip. And Pip had a Togekiss. And I realized we didn't have any flying resist, nor did we have anything that could kill Togekiss. So he just nasty plot in front of the screen setter and just went ham. Yeah. And that team got thrown into the trash can so fast. <laughs> and we never talked about it again. Oh, speaking of teams to throw into the trash can, uh, to to back up a little bit, one of the things that my the Astros did a lot um, is that on Thursday nights, uh, I would come home and I would, uh, you know, drink and a lot, and then I'd hop into VC and everyone would just listen to me ramble about like, oh, I'm going to build this fucking amazing team, let me tell you. And so one time we built... Well, one of the teams that we built was like quadruple bunny offense that did not see the light of day. Uh, Scarf, Diggersby, Bandit, Azu, Cinderace, and Magirna, and then just Tomahawk, Equilibra. <laughs> uh, but the other team that was amazingly bad was uh, I wanted to build a team with special Nocturna. And I was cool. like, how can I do this? Uh, the idea was gravity, gravity fidget. And so we were like, okay. We're going to build a gravity team. So we have Porygon 2, Fidget, Nocturna, special. It turned into Banded Nocturna, unfortunately. But then, like, Krillowat, Jumbao with gravity, and Boots Crucible. So I just like to point out there's no Earthquake user on this team. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. It was. It may be one of the most disgusting teams ever, and the name of it is "How can you call this a gravity team when there's no grav apple?" <laughs> <laughs> I think you posted this in the uh, what's it called in the team dump, didn't you? Yes, I did. I did. Yes, that's right. Ah, oh, that was a fun. That was my favorite of like the drunken Thursday night getting a call, start yeah. building a team. I uh, brought it. I brought it in uh, room tour once. And I got six out by something. I don't remember why, by what. And I just deleted it. I was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> I it don't wasn't even you. like it team. wasn't even a real mon. It was like one of those times where you play some dude you've never ever seen before in your life. And yeah. they bring something silly like Scarf plus Manta, and you realize you cannot revenge kill Scarf plus Manta for some reason because. <laughs> Well, you don't have Earthquake, do you? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you could probably put Excadrill over something and, like, actually have it be s decent, but, like, <laughs> it's a bad team. I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> <laughs> I got really mad in one of those room tours because I brought Rain against a team that had Snail, Argo, and Toxapex. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, I don't think I can break any of those. I've I've been in a couple room tours under alts, as I was saying beforehand, and there was one room tour I was in where a dude brought Argonaut Rain, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, Argonaut, yeah, no problem, no problem. I've got a I've got a Mon that can resist. I got a Krillowat or something." Or, 
everything. I've got a bunch of teams I can handle this. And the dude is like, technician banded rain Argonaut. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, fuck you. Why is your why is your Aqua Jet doing like 70 to my unresisted Mon? This is the dumbest thing ever. Argonaut's uh, like slow as well. It's like base 68 speed, something like right? that. Right! Uh, it's so stupid. I will say, though, if if you're on my team, I'm going to build copious amounts of weather teams, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Hello, everyone. This is Voltage and Post, letting you know that this still holds true. I've built seven weather teams since this tournament has started. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's a promise right there. Yeah. I mean, my fucking Snorlax Sun team, like the Astro, Jumbao, Snorlax, Tomahawk, uh, Venusaur, Cinderace team... Maybe one of my favorite Sun teams I've ever made. That was the team I unfortunately lost a stretch to game two, but oh, such a good. It, it did so well in testing. It was one of my favorite things ever, especially building Astro Sun back in the day. Yeah, with Toxic. I actually and... quite enjoy playing Cap right now. Um, in Cap PL, like, building felt like a chore, like a lot when we, mm -hmm. we hadn't nerfed Astro. Yeah, Astro yet. And just yeah. overall, the metagame just didn't feel quite as fun. It was just kind of bland, I want to say. You just saw the same yeah. seven-ish mons. Well, not seven-ish mons, but like seven-ish team varieties, idea. yeah. Yeah, you saw yeah, like, was like PDT team. And then oh, was like... Cap players and their slow Shifu combos. <laughs> Name a more yeah. iconic duo. Ah, it just didn't feel good. Like I, it, it actually made me realize how good we had it when we had Z moves, and I could actually break stuff instead of having to deal with like, oh, Astrolotto has boots, and everything else also has boots on that team. Guess I'm not using any hazards. So yeah, pfft. that's why okay, you run so. mono knockoff. Every single, yeah, Layson, if I draft you for Snake Draft, we are going to make a team that every single Mon has knockoff, and we are not going to sacrifice anything to do it. Oh, Christ. Yeah, Sounds like but don't promise. worry, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get picked early anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's, he's like thinking, oh god, I don't want to be on the Snake Rattler, <laughs> no. Well, no, I was thinking you'd pick Snake Rattler first, just to get your mascot. Yeah. yeah, you know, if I did that, it's like, psych, I'm not going to play in this tour, but Snake is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's going to be funny if, like, Snake hasn't been picked up yet. Um, if he doesn't get picked, like, in the first 10 picks, uh, I would absolutely pick Snake. But Snake is Snake has literally told me, like, I don't know why people draft me for team tournaments. And I was like, oh, Snake, have more faith in yourself. <laughs> Yeah, no, people like so, TR. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just... Team tournaments can be a lot of pressure, too. Especially when you want to, like, show, okay, we're not shit. I'm not shit. Please, just, like, believe me. I'm not shit. Mm -hmm. And so, like, having that ability to do so. And I think that sort of comes back around to having, like, a good team where you can really feel confident about the teams that you're bringing to matches. And, like, the good... You know, as cheesy as it sounds, like a good support network in your roster to really motivate, you know, development. So mm -hmm. there's that. So yeah, as as cheesy as that is, um, yeah, that's kind of the uh, mindset I have in there. No, it's the I feel um, like so yeah, yeah. I actually feel like that cap is a tiny, tiny bit harder than some other communities to get into, simply because there's no real lobby in the Discord. And people just sometimes just talk in the cap chat and other times they just use the off topic or whatever mm -hmm. the channel is called. Or the metagame. And they just alternate and there's a lot of channels, most of which you don't really want to talk in because you don't know what's happening, such as the whole process chat and all of right. that. Or whenever like metagame and it's like, oh, one channel's metagame, one channel is cap. Which one do I talk into about Cap? Both? Neither? I don't know. So there, right. it's it's a little bit unclear, like to me, like uh, because I hung out a lot of discords like PU, NU, Ubers, OMs, mm -hmm. all of that. It's it's not always very clear. So people just default to you know the PS room. 
which yeah. Yeah. ends up somehow always talking about snail storm. I don't know how, <laughs> but it, it, yeah. it starts out as my team loses to Zapdos and 30 messages later, the, the team has a snail storm instead of a Zapdos check. So well, no, yeah. s- snails is Zapdos counter, don't you know? It gets <laughs> yeah, ice beam. Just run a ice beam. Yeah. <sighs> I, I want to say to you, I would, I might request to the mods of the cap discord as well that during in the metagame drop down that they have a dedicated channel specifically to the ongoing like tournament that's going there because i know nfe what they do sometimes too is uh, they have a channel entirely dedicated to nfe pl when they have it right right? Mm -hmm. and then then that either archives it or goes away and i think it would just be a really good way to sort of centralize a lot of just tournament talk so that way it's not bleeding into metagame for example or the cap or off topic i think it would be something to really hey burkle if you're listening this is what we should do <laughs> i think it's actually that, yeah, yeah Qu- no, no. Yells is the one that um directs the the cap discord so she might be the one to talk to hey, Kwani, if you're listening this is what we should do no Kwani's great she's she's a wonderful mod and so is burkle too and all the mods are great yeah you're welcome i promise i promise uh yeah so now i have to catch up on the the new oh boy oh hey no that doesn't oh. exist what are you talking about there's no oh, oh yeah, yeah there's, <laughs> there's, there's no... none of those i will say i'm kind of glad cap 1v1 is not in this tournament again i know that there was talk about it during capital but cap 1v1 just feels not developed at all and i'm glad that that's off the table here yeah no I, I don't think like it's a fun meta to play sure but in terms of its competitive viability i don't think that people want to be playing coin flip games every time right and also there, right. there was a cap 1v1 tournament that just kind of fizzled out into nothing like it, it got to the finals and it was just people calling activity like for the the last few rounds right which is not what you want mm. One of the things I might advocate, especially as we go over the course of the year, now that like Showdown's got like these boxes things or whatever they are, it's way easier to consolidate sets and everything. Um, and obviously, I don't have a ton of placement to do this myself, but I might start really advocating for the development of like cap other metas to an extent. Just even like cap NFE, I know Marjane has expressed interest in really developing that again for another tournament down the line, which we could see. Or like... Um, you know, really getting into the meat and potatoes of like Cap UU, if that's actually going to be a thing, how can we get people playing it or something along those lines, just so that when we get to a future snake draft such as these, now it's sort of starting to look a bit more like previous or like other snake drafts where you have a little bit more broad choices of metagames to play. I would really like to see Cap Lil Cap like developed because yeah. it's it seems like such a fun tier. Obviously, there's a couple of things that are completely bonkers. I don't remember the names of the little cup mods. But so are you talking about Caudette? Yeah, Caudette, I remember. No, is... here's the thing about Caudette, though. Uh, Belly Drum was removed from the egg moves. It's now a level one learn set move by Commodore, so yeah, Caudette that, can't learn Belly Drum. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Caudette got nerfed for the reason of Cup little cup being a tier that can be played and is not absolutely awful and i remember i uh, i was watching plas play it and mm-hmm. uh i think it was also trace because trace is a friend and scratch at rim seemed really really good as well and a lot of bonds that snug low yeah, yeah yeah whose evolutions are not good because for one reason or another they're just you know not good mm-hmm. um right. their little cup variants are actually really really good so right. I would really like to see it because it's a tier that I know the Little Cup community would like to play. Yeah, so in past uh, Cap TTs, Little Cup has been included. Um, and actually, if you go further back in the first Cap TT, there was uh, Cap Doubles. So there, there, there has been a history of OMs being included in more competitive formats for Cap. But usually when that happens, it's because somebody from Doubles or somebody from Little Cup wants to get involved and really push for that. But then the, mm-hmm. the tier kind of hinges on their involvement. And once they kind of go off and do something else, it falls apart. Absolutely. And I think, too, with Little Cup in particular, uh, that is one that could absolutely be developed just because 
Uh, one of the projects for Cap going forward, especially between now and Cap 29, is the finalization of the Prevos for, like, Colossoil and for um, the uh, the one other one that I can't remember off the top of my head that needs a Prevo. Um, but, like, you know, we've had Monom and Duom be finalized, and we've had No Face be finalized. So, yeah, Protowat and the evolution, or the Prevo of Colossoil are, like, down the line coming up. And then also with, like, I think it's Miasmite or whatever the uh, Cap 28 Prevo is. Yeah, I think it's is. something. Mm -hmm. Like, there's absolutely... These Prevos are getting finished, and let's see how they work competitively, too. And I think it's... I think you know, if we can get some LC players to, like, really hop in, Cap LC could easily just come back and have really cool options. I feel like it's a supply and demand kind of issue that uh, Cap doesn't develop the Little Cap mounts more than they would, you know. They, they just kind of make them at times. Like, yeah. from the perspective of somebody who's more looking at Cap as a tier, like a competitive tier... It feels mm -hmm. like the little cup and the prevos in general just get made and they kind of have like a semblance of balance on their stats and it makes sense. But it's mostly to make them feel more so like actual like Pokemon from the games. Like, oh, this would have a prevo, right? Yeah, that sounds like right. a yeah. possibility. And then when people say, oh, why don't you develop it more? The answer kind of feels like, oh, there's no supply for it as a meta game. Sorry, there's no demand for it as a meta game, and then the players that want to play it see that there's no resources or anything about it, so they don't play it. So it's like one of them has to budge forward, as you said earlier. That, for example, a little cup or an NFE player is like, hey, I want to get into cap NFE, for example. Uh, I'm gonna push for it, and when they're gone, it's the, the project is also gone. So right. I don't know. There's no clear solution. I'm just kind of stating my opinion really but i would really like to see at least little cup at least like nfe see mm -hmm. the light of day again in gen 8 yeah and and one of the sorry I'm, i just have one input on that the the thing about the cap the prevos for cap 2 is they are not made with competitive implications in mind and that's like one of the hard rules when developing the prevos is like we are not making these to be competitive pokemon whereas the former the final forms are and i think personally i don't like that as much about the prevo process but then again i'm not really involved in the prevo process so it's not my place to say like oh i think this is a dumb thing to do and we should do it this way because i'm not involved in it but um I think I think there's definitely merit to developing these metagames as a whole. And I think they're like again, with Marjane, G Luke and I are sort of the we want to get the cap NFE balls rolling again. And I think those will come down the line shortly, especially now that Crown Tundra is there. And for as far as we can tell, there aren't going to be too many more major shakeups to the meta from this point onward. Uh, we hope. Uh, aside from those inevitable Gen 4 remakes. But um <laughs> I would say there's definitely potential, especially in future tours, to really have those expanded tiers and therefore expanding the player base of Cap as well. And then you can even go into Cap Ubers, which is oh god, just Ubers yeah, it's just like Ubers. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's just yeah. Ubers with Equilibra. <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, it's just Ubers. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. Is it actually? That doesn't shock me at all. Yeah, Touch like, on a... especially in Gen A, like. Holy crap, the metagame right now makes me so depressed. There's, we counted them, there's 11 viable Pokemon. Only 11. That sounds miserable. <laughs> it is, but people really like playing the tier at the moment because it fulfills like something in them. I don't know how to explain it. <sighs> it makes them feel warm and fuzzy knowing they only have about 12 Pokemon to choose from. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Maybe. But sorry, if I can touch on a, a previous point that we were getting on, is that yeah. um, getting more involvement in the uh, the CAP OMs kind of has a prerequisite of having more involvement in CAP in general. Like, CAP already has a pretty low player base in terms of any of the tiers that are listed on the uh, official Smogun tiers. Um, Absolutely. But also, like, I don't know, the last time that I was playing regularly was, like, uh, 2017 or so, 
And so coming back, I was really surprised that people like Jordy or Finchinator were playing Cap whatsoever. Because, you know, I, I think back then there were like maybe one or two videos by Pokeaim that kind of went over Cap and there was literally no other coverage or uh, outside intervention into it. But people, mm -hmm. yeah, people like Jordy or Joe or Stresh or uh, Finchinator again, uh, it's really great to have them involved with the community. And I think it yeah. um, gets more people uh, interested in it. 100 percent and like that's that's part of the reason why podcap even exists to be honest like why i still do podcasts despite everything because you know if you can reach out to people and have them hear about tournaments like these happening even if you know most of the people listening to podcap happen to be cap players but like for the three people who aren't who like see oh there's a new podcap and i play i play 1v1 for example or i play like other metas like stab mons and everything or nfe nobody plays stab like, mons. Hey, i play stab mons didn't you know i played stab mons when it was first being developed <laughs> mm. uh, um, <laughs> okay fair no but but the point is like the more production that you make for something the more likely people might see it and then take an interest to it so i think that's i think you're absolutely right tadasuke having having those people almost do your advertising for you is a great way to bring people in. So I'm excited to see who all decides to sign up for snake draft, given that we have again, like two weeks to do so. Yeah. Well, the thing with signups for tournaments like these is that they tend to peter out after the first week or so. Like you might get a few right, right. surprise signups in the, the later weeks, but I don't know. You never know. Um, for something like CatPL, I think that Finch's involvement was kind of hinged on being a, an assistant manager to Burkle, so I'm not, I, I doubt he'll sign up for this, but right. you never know. But I mean, people like Stresh or Joe or other people like that could sign up. I mean, Jordy's already managing. Yeah. And I think, again, the uh, the rules to put in, what is it, like cancering, you know? Like, even if those were for, like, more major snake drafts or anything like that, it'll be interesting to make sure that, like, those apply for cap as well and so that that way people if they don't get drafted on the teams they want to don't they want to play on that they'll still finish out the tour and everything mm -hmm. well there's also yeah. trading uh will be legal for the tournament but whether or not people are going to yeah, want yeah. to trade away high level players like that is another issue yeah it's it's hard to know and i think as a manager i always keep trades in the back of my mind just like in the event that it's important or like, you know, it might be relevant. Oh, I need an SM player and I can give up two SS players for this one SM player, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure um, trades are supposed to be one, uh, one to one, though. Yeah. Oh, if they're going to be that way, then then I have to rethink everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would say it's it's something I always keep in the back of my mind just to be safe. Mm. It can never hurt. Anyway, um, is there anything else that you all, both of you have in terms of like tournaments you want to talk about or uh, future playtest stuff or like new metagame trends or anything? Uh, sort of I wanted topics? to say that the Miasma playtest like started out really, really strong, but because DLC 2 dropped, uh, my opinion on the mod has completely changed because it's a brand mm. new metagame. And even though I thought to myself at the very beginning that, oh, you know, Miasma is... Uh, it's quite strong, neutralizing gas, like, makes or breaks this mon. And not only that, but uh, it's really hard sometimes to guess what set it's going to run. Is it special? Is it physical? CB, boots, mixed, yada, yada, yada. That whole shebang, what coverage move is it running? Because I depend on the coverage move to switch something in. So I have to scout, like, EQ, T-Bolt, CC, whatever. You get the point. And now, yeah. I haven't seen anyone use me as mon at all. Ever since DLC dropped, everyone has yeah. been on the Curem and Zyger train. Good freaking riddance to both of them. They were not healthy at all. And running Baswell is not something I want to do in the current metagame. Right. Yeah, but you're also going to win the playtest tour. So, you know, it all works out. <sighs> I wish. Yeah. Now that I'm out, I'll just give you all my shitty team building ideas. And you can just sit, you can just tell me, oh, these are terrible. And I'll just be like, yeah, okay. It's going to be me and uh, Shisp next round. I, I can tell. And then we're both going to yeah. cry. <laughs> I hate to see it. Yeah, I, I will say with Playtest in particular, most of my Playtest tour teams have been, again, like five OU mons and then Tomahawk. Or like, yeah. f you know, if I'm like literally 
my yeah or Zygarde, Spectre, and like Tapu Fini, Cinderace, uh, and then Equilibra and Pert, and that was literally a team. Or like this HO garbage team that I made that can't beat bulky water types is literally just Exca, Pharaoh, Salamence, Spectre, Magirna, and Zapdos Galar. It's like I haven't used. I use maybe one cap per team, and that's it, which is kind of a problem, I think, for cap a little bit, just because, there, again, there's no reason to even use, like, stuff like Smokamoto, just because there's, I mean, you just can't do anything. Yeah, you know? there's just way better you know, fire types, yeah. There. Right. Like, there's no reason to not, like, you can run Astro, but, like, Astro these days is primarily just you know utility i'm not going to use astro as like a boots breaker as much as i am going to be like for screens and spikes and knockoff and that's basically it it can even pass a wish sometimes sometimes yeah 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 Yeah, the meta well we'll see i mean like i don't think it's the meta's in an awful place now that zygarde and kirim are gone but i'm going to be very i'm going to keeping a close eye on it to be sure yeah i think that stuff like pharaoh and uh What's the other one? Mel Metal and uh, Magirna probably aren't going to be a- around for too much longer. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I hope, I hope that, that if they, they do, do get banned, it happens before Snake Draft starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, having yeah. something get banned in the middle of a, a tournament round is always kind of funny because it's like you have that brief sort of relief of like knowing that something's getting banned, but you know for a fact you're going to see it in your next game. No, the worst one. The worst one will always be Cap Team Tournament 5 when Equilibra dropped mid-tour, and it was <sighs> the worst fucking thing. I was actually bought one day after Libra dropped. I was bought in <laughs> mid-season, and that yeah. was really funny because I, I had taken a hiatus from the camp metagame before that, so I just dropped and I saw a new Mon. I hadn't used it at all. I didn't know that it had dropped like two days prior or whatever. And I was like, oh, you know, this is something new that I have to play with. I don't mind. I haven't t- tasted this meta game in six months. I'm I'm good with it. And then we did my very first play test, and I was like, oh, oh, oh this mod uh, sucks. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, okay, D- Doom Desire. This is I awful. see. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just glad that Bulletproof is off of Libra. That was the worst. I. Thanks. I think it was was Jordy the ability leader during Libra. <laughs> um, I want to say yes. <laughs> Fucking Jordy. I'm not uh, sure. Ah, Jordy. No, uh, it's... Yeah, I don't know. A lot of things went wrong with Libra. We we, we learned our lesson. Actually, we did. And Arimuth was created before that, and we ended up. Yeah. With Libra. And then we made Astro afterwards too. <laughs> <sighs> Honestly, like at least. Sorry, uh, no, go seeing like both Equilibra and Astro was kind of relieving for me because like when I first started getting involved in the meta, a lot of just really unviable mods were created. Like Plasmanta was just shit when it was released, and Vol- yeah. Volkraken was a bit of a letdown. Like it, it could be scary occasionally, but the meta didn't really account for anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm happy. I mean, I know that a lot of people don't like seeing cat mods in S tier. But I don't know. I don't have a problem with seeing something that we spend months and months creating, like actually functioning well for once. Yeah, I will say with uh, the TLT in particular, not to get too deep into that rabbit hole, but um, this one, we were all of the consensus where like we do not want to make an S tier mon if we can help it, and we're gonna you know make sure that we are making what the community wants, right? But we're also going to make sure that like this thing is not another metagame warping threat the way that. Even like Pajantum and Jumbao have been, but like yeah. Pajantum, Jumbao, and then Equilibra and Astro. If we disregard the starters, which had a small impact on the meta, but they were also held back by the fact that they were like a framework cap. Like, consider Pajantum, Jumbao, Equilibra, and then Astro were four basically S tier mons when they came into the meta game, and so we were like, okay, let's try to make something that's more A minus E, and I think. Uh, mi- miasma really fits that decently well here, I think. So yeah, I kind of, I can get behind that. Yeah. So in that sense, hey, worked out all right, <laughs> yeah. despite the fact that the whole process was one controversy after another. Yeah, I remember looking at uh, the Gen Seven VR and just seeing one blacklisted mon, and that was Pluffle. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
You know, for what it's worth, Kerf is actually really good now, and I'm kind of amazed by that. Yeah, it yeah. Specs Kerf. Mm -hmm. I remember Specs Kerf is really good. in a, either XY or ORAS, they let me uh, run the viability rankings, which was a horrible decision on their part. But <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I, I think, like I made, I was very adamant about Colossal being S tier when it was probably maybe like mid A, but. Uh, that was also just like an absolute shit like time to be playing the meta because there were there were no like serious players yeah but the vr right now well not exactly right now but the, the soon-to-be vr is going to be very good yeah we'll be as a member of the vr count or the team behind the viability rankings uh i can guarantee that there has been obvious talk about getting one out it's just that now that uh, Zygarde and Kyurem are gone, like, viability's all up in the air yeah. again. Yeah. So, yeah, it's hard yeah. to really give an accurate viability ranking when there's not stability in the metagame whatsoever. Uh, that said, I'm going to absolutely advocate for Spectria to be, like, A+, plus, if not S. But that's the only one I know for certain is, like, obnoxiously up there. So I forget yeah. who said this, but I saw somebody talking about Spectria being, like, UUBL at best. I'm like, uh, I don't think <laughs> that's. I don't think that's a correct did opinion. Did not see what its ability does, or or what? I don't know. Like Spectria just cleans up games once the ghost resist is gone, and it's or not even like even Whittle, funny. yeah. It's just it's not fun <laughs> to play against. Sometimes it's really fun to use. It's like, ha oh, ha! Now I can bring in my Spectria and win. But <laughs> it's. It's almost like Dracovish in that way, where it's like, ah, surprise! Yeah, you get to spam one move, and like you either lose or don't. Yeah, yeah basically. And even like, even though Regieleki is not nearly as good as we once thought it would be, it's like the same mindset there, like the limited move pool, but the absurd stats. Yeah, I mean, I've won a couple of games because my opponent forgot to bring a ground type, and I just clicked Volt Switch under. Uh... And the resist took like 35 or something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you know, now whenever I build teams, having one, if not two, ground resist is a must on the team at all times. And like, that's why I love having pert so much too, because like, it's a solid water, it's not a water resist necessarily, but like, water ground is such a good typing for a pivot, like a yeah. defensive rocker with flip turn and toxic. Yeah, getting flip turn was huge. Yeah. It's so it's it's really fun to use, and I think bulky water types right now, especially like CM Taunt Finny, is legitimately one of the best mons in the metagame that no one is like using, or people are just starting to come around to use. Yeah, I think that I've been seeing that a lot more recently. Just the the CM Draining Kiss is like Draining Kiss is such a fucking good move that it's like CM Draining. Kiss what can you do? Five owed me. Rich brought it in a room tour. Yeah. Reach has been preaching it, and I, again, I used it game two during my match against Sun Miser yesterday, and, like, literally, he could not really break through it, so it was really good, and I, it's going to be one of my building muses for a little while, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to CT me in any tours, uh, bring something that bit CM Taunt Finny. Yeah, bring, like, physical uh, Tapu Koko or something. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, unless you all have any last things you want to say, I think this is uh, this has been a good podcast, and I would be happy to wrap it up here. Yeah, no, I'm good. Please draft me. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much all for listening to uh, this another... Fuck, I'm going to cut that bit out. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Uh, thanks again to my guests, Tadasuke and Layson, for being such wonderful co-commentators. And uh, thank you all so much for watching and listening. If you like this podcast, please leave a comment, like it, uh, share it with your pals. Any publicity helps for both developing Cap as a whole and for getting me those sweet, sweet views on YouTube. Um, I've been Voltage, and just remember, uh, don't use Specs Blacephalon. It's not good. Please don't use it. I tried it, and it sucks. It's not fun. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'll see you all for another podcast in the future. Until then.